Team 24 is just a ride around the corner and I wanted to create the survival guide so that you have a pleasant and enjoyable experience at Team 24. So if you're definitely going to Team 24 this year, you want to watch this entire video as I have a lot of tips for you. I struggled a lot last year and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made last year. I know for sure I'm not going to be making those mistakes again. So we are going to kick things off by talking about the hotels. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out the merch store. And if you want to help support the channel, there's a link tree in the description down below. So make sure you check out that link tree. And let's jump into tip number one, hotels. All right, so hotels. This is critical because most of you are probably going to either come on your own affair, so which means you're paying for it, or your company is going to send you. Now, if your company sends you and or if you're paying for yourself, you probably are looking for the cheapest option. And so the hotel in which the Team 24 conference is going to take place is not the cheapest option. So my only tip that I have for you is get your hotel as close as humanly possible to the Venetian. Because if you're farther out, you are going to regret it. I was about a mile away last year. I was one street over and down a little bit. And trust me when I tell you, that was too far. I had to take a shuttle in in the morning. I would get dropped off at this mall across the street. Then I would have to walk through the whole mall, go up and over escalators. And it was just like a whole thing. Then I had to cut across the entire Venetian just to get to the back end. It was a mess. So if you want to maximize your time and travel and like just preparation time, the closer the better, because if you can actually stay at the Venetian, that's obviously the best choice. Obviously it's going to be the most expensive choice, but trust me when I tell you, you want to be as close as humanly possible. Now, why, why do you need to be as close as humanly possible? Because you get to the event and then you leave the event at the end, right? Well, there's a lot happening in the event that you're going to want that hotel to be as close as humanly possible. Number one, you want to be able to drop off your things. There's a lot of swag and we'll talk about swag in a minute. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video and make sure you stick around for the whole video. But we do get a lot of swag. There's a lot of vendors out there. Last year, I had heard that it was the first time that we got back to normal where there was like a normal amount of people, the normal amount of vendors and a normal amount of attendees. I would expect them to either stay at the same level, if not invite even more people. So Needless to say, there's going to be a lot of stuff for you to get. And so you want to make sure that you have the ability to drop off your stuff because I still have lines on my back from my backpack being heavy, from all the bags I'm carrying that are heavy. And so if you don't want to be lugging around 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds of stuff, <laughs> you want to be able to drop those off. Now, granted, these are daily, right? The event is two and a half days long. So you will have opportunities to go back, but that does limit you on what you can carry. So if you're going to bring your laptop and chargers and stuff like that, that's already some weight on your back and you're walking a lot. So this brings me up to another point where we're going to talk about later about shoes. So make sure you stick around again because we're going to be talking about shoes in a minute. But there is a lot of walking involved and there's a lot of just load on your on your shoulders and on your back. And you just want that relief. So having that hotel close by is going to allow you to go drop things off in your room and come back without missing too much. And obviously the farther out, if you got to take a taxi, the less likely you're going to go and maybe you'll go and you'll stay and you won't come back and you'll miss out on a lot of the events. So closer, the better. Next, freshen up. We are doing a lot of walking here, a lot of walking and a lot of talking. And so you may want to freshen up a little bit, right? You might want to go hit a quick shower or brush your teeth, whatever you need to do. There's a lot of walking, a lot of sweating. This is a desert in Vegas. It's last year when I was there is about the eighties. Obviously the rooms are climate control, everything size climate control, but you're still doing a lot of walking. And if you do go outside, it's going to be warm. And so you may want to be able to freshen up and just, you know, clean yourself up here. So, because there's a lot of talking, a lot of networking, and you just want to be as hygienic as possible. Next, having your room close by allows you to relax for a bit. There is a lot happening, a lot of noise, especially in the expo hall. There's chatter everywhere. And I remember just going back to my hotel at night and my head just ringing from like all of the talking and all of the noises. And there are some quiet areas that you can do, but you're going to have to either still be seeing a bunch of people because this is a hotel after all. 
in Vegas. And so there's a lot of just non-conference people, a lot of non-conference traffic. There's not a lot of places to sit other than if you're going to play or gamble, which I don't recommend because gambling is a taxation for the mathematically challenged. But needless to say, it's either you on the floor or fighting for some very, very limited seating space available. So again, having your room, being able to just take off your shoes, sit down, relax for 30, 20 minutes is going to be a blessing, especially after six, seven hours of just constant noise, noise, noise coming at you all day long. Again, you could go to your room, but if the farther it is, the less likely you're probably going to make it. So that's that. Now, on this traveling part, right, my favorite reason and the reason why I'm not making that mistake again is all about the taxis. I live in a place where we don't rely on public transit a whole lot, and Las Vegas does rely on taxis quite a bit. So if your room is not within walking distance of the event, you're probably most likely going to need some sort of a shuttle or a taxi. Now, the shuttles, it was great for me because I can get to the event, but they wouldn't pick me up. So on the way back, especially because a lot of these events, even though the conference ends fairly early in the day, there's still a lot of things happening beyond 5 p.m. And so you will most likely be at the event late into the night, especially bash night. That thing ends like at 11 p.m. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for you to have to walk in the darkness. And so taxis is really your only option, especially since those shuttles aren't going to be running at 11 p.m. And so the taxis, there's a long line. So one of the things that I noticed was that there's dedicated taxi sections at the hotel, but they're so freaking long. And like I was waiting for like 30 to 45 minutes just outside, super tired, still chugging along my 30 pounds of swag. And so just avoid that if you can. The whole taxi thing, even though it's Vegas is streamlined for taxis, the way it works, I, at least last year, was super inefficient. At least, well, not inefficient, but there's a lot of waiting, right? There's a lot of like, you got to wait. And then you compel to like tip the people that are there flagging the taxis down for you. So do the Uber if you, if, as another little pro tip, side tip that I didn't even include in my list. Uber if you can, because you have a little bit more control there. But avoid the taxi scene because they're rude, they're creepy. It's just not an experience I ever want to redo again. So which is one of the reasons why I'm actually driving there to just avoid the taxis altogether. So that's it on hotels. Uh, let me know in the comments if any of these are something that you've suffered before in the past. And, and these tips do generally will apply to even beyond the Atlassian conference, right? Just anytime you go to any conference, these are some good pro tips there. Let's switch over to clothing. So wear comfortable shoes. I was walking on average about 15,000 steps a day. You don't want to be in high heels for 15,000 steps. You don't want to be in dress shoes for 15,000 steps. Your feet are going to hate you. And so wear comfortable shoes. Nobody's looking at your shoes. Do bring a nice pair of shoes, though, because there are events, and we'll talk about this in a second here. There are some dinners. There are some nice things happening every once in a while. But for the most part, you want as comfortable as shoes as possible because you are going to be walking a lot. And so you, unless you want blisters and your feet hurting like crazy, wear some comfortable shoes. Wear comfortable clothes as well. This isn't a beauty pageant. Nobody's there dressed to impress. Again, there are some couple dinners and stuff like that where you may want to, you know, spiffing up a little bit. But for the most part, during the sessions or during the expo, everybody's just wearing t-shirts. Almost everybody's wearing some sort of a, a branded t-shirt and just some jeans, some pants, right? Just something easy, like something that you're going to be comfortable in. There's a lot of walking. You don't want to overheat yourself. And even though we're in Vegas, you might want to bring like a little light zipper jacket for when you, if and when you do go outside, you want something light. You want something that's, you don't want a sweater. You don't want something huge or bulky because then you're just going to be carrying that. And you're just going to add that to your load of swag and everything from the previous section. So wear comfortable clothes. No need to be uncomfortable here. No need to have the tie. No need to have any of that. Unless, again, you're going to some sort of a special event or special dinner where you do need to impress a little bit. But for the most part, at least during the, the regular activities, the planned activities for the conference, comfortable dressing, much required. You are also going to be getting a lot of merch. There's a lot of swag. These vendors, not only is it T-shirts and bags and bottles and a bunch of toys and a bunch of different things, you're going to be having a lot of stuff. They're, like These vendors give out a lot. And almost every single vendor has stickers at a minimum or they got something going on. Make room in your luggage. I flew Southwest in the past, not to this conference, but usually when I go to conference, I, I fly Southwest because I get my two free luggages. So I take a luggage literally basically empty because I know it's coming back full on the way back. So when you're packing, don't take a fully like just 
full suitcase because you're going to regret it because you're going to have all this stuff and you're not going to have an ability or an easy way to transport it back. So make sure you you plan ahead and leave yourself some room, whether that's an extra luggage or just empty room in your luggage. You're going to want some room for all that swag, because trust me when I tell you, there's going to be a lot of swag. So make sure you plan appropriately for that. And then finally, just do bring some business casual attire, right? Because there are some dinners. There's going to be um, like the bash party is a themed event. Uh, I forgot what the name of what the theme is, but every one of these vendors might have some sort of a special uh, attire that you should be wearing. So check those out. Check them out beforehand so you can dress appropriately. Don't be surprised like I was last year when it was like an 80s night and I brought nothing 80s related. And so everybody's kind of does not everybody. I would say the majority of the people, especially the ones that took tip number one to heart where their hotel is close and they're able to go back to their hotel to change. Those people will definitely be uh, in, in the themed clothing. I didn't want to make the trek back to my hotel because I didn't want I didn't have a shuttle or I didn't want to take a taxi back. So I just stood there for like five hours waiting for the bash party to start. And so obviously I was just wearing whatever I was wearing that day. So again, number one really does influence number two quite a bit. Now let's go talk about swag. There's going to be a lot of swag, lots and lots and lots of swag. I can't uh, I can't stress how much swag there is out there. Go find the vendors that have bags first. You want to get the bags because the what you don't want to be doing is carrying your swag like this. And you don't want to be walking around everywhere carrying swag. So make sure you go get the, some vendors have bags. So go find them first. Ask because the bags, you can start stuffing all your swag in there. And again, now going back to tip number one, if you have the hotel, you can go drop them off, come back, keep going for more. Now, the vendors are there to build connections, right? So they are there to sell you on stuff, right? So just be kind, be be nice and and hear them out. It's usually a minute or two and, and there's usually a lot of people. So it's they're trying to get through as many people as possible. But at the minimum, they just want to scan your badge. So show them your badge and then you can grab your swag. Now, there are opportunities where... The vendors do just want to give their swag away. So just simply saying like, hey, can I have this? Like nobody's going to say no to you. So don't be afraid. That was one of the things that I was the most shy about. It was like I really wanted that swag or I really wanted this thing and just being afraid and, and not not approachable. Don't just steal. Don't just like grab it. Like definitely ask. They're going to give it to you. They're more than happy to give it to you. They just want to scan your badge. Right. At the end of the day, they need to scan so they can show and, and build their mailing list because really that's what they're there for is that email list. So just interact with them for a few seconds, grab that swag and go on to the next one. I want to again, echo the proximity of the hotel. Very, very important because you're going to be carrying all this swag. Some of them are light, like a sticker. Some of them are big, like an Oculus, right? So you don't want to be carrying all this stuff around all day long. So having that hotel is just, just, I can't express how important it is to have that hotel as close as possible. Now, most people, little pro tip that I should have given you a little bit earlier, but for those that stayed throughout the whole video, Treasure Island across the street, I, from what I hear, is usually like half the price, if not cheaper, and it's just very convenient. It's the, There's like a pedestrian bridge that you can walk across, and so you don't even need to cross the street. You don't need to go deal with the Las Vegas noise down there. It's just from the Venetian straight across, and you're there at, at Treasure Island. So that is a really good option, but again, within proximity, the better. All right, now let's talk about the important things. Let's talk about networking. When you go to this conference, I've been to so many conferences, and I always went with the idea that I wanted to go learn. I wanted to go and attend the talks and learn how to use Jira better and Confluence better. And this year is gonna be all about AI and JSM and whatnot, ITSM. That's great. Keep in mind that all of those things, because you're a paid customer, all of them are recorded. So what I would recommend you do is talk to people, talk to other people, be there to interact. I go to the Atlassian conference, I have zero, I haven't even looked at the sessions yet. Uh, we're two weeks out. I couldn't tell you a single session other than the keynotes. The keynotes is the only one that I don't miss out on because that's where all the product announcements are made and that's where like all the cool people are gonna be, like the, the guests and whatnot. So I go to the keynotes, but I haven't looked at a single session. I, I don't even really care what the sessions are. I'm gonna catch them on recordings after the conference. So I'm there to talk to people. I'm there to meet people. So that kind of goes on to the next one. We are, as creators, as the Atlassian creators that we are, there's there's quite a few of us, there's like 60 of us. We're all gonna, most of us, <laughs> most of us are gonna be out there in full force. So if you see a content creator, if you see so, like a YouTuber who makes these contents, uh, approach us, right? That's what we're there for. We are there not to learn because we, we kind of know the tool already. <laughs> we know a lot of it already. And we get early access to all, all the cool functionalities already. 
but we're there to network. We're there to uh, see each other. We're there. We only get to see each other literally once or twice a year. So we are there to just, you know, be together, spend time together, share more memories together, build our bonds together. And I went last year as just this like lonely YouTuber that I just made Jura videos, right? Like that was it. And it wasn't until I got there that I saw other people that were kind of in a similar journey. They were just, everybody was an, uh, an island of islands, right? Where everybody was just kind of doing their own thing and, and we all knew of each other. But at Team 23 last year, we really came together and bonded and we've created the Jira life, right? This, this whole thing here wouldn't exist without Team 23. And so you never know what's going to come if you talk to people and the opportunities that are going to be presented to you. If you just go outside your comfort zone and talk and network and just really be in that moment, because if you just go to the sessions, yes, you're going to learn cool new features of Jira and Confluence and Atlas and Compass and all the products. But that is such a miss on what this event's about. This is called Team 24. Focus on the team aspect and really go and talk to people. Also, on a very similar note on team, some of people like me, myself included, I'm a team of one, right? So I'm going to be there. Luckily this year, I have the creators that I'm going to be hanging out with, but almost everybody else, yourself included, might be there with your company team. And so I would say, reach out to people. If you see somebody just having lunch alone and you guys are in a group, invite them over because it is a lonely experience. If you go to these conferences alone, this is, it is a very, very lonely experience. And and I was there last year as again as a <laughs> quote unquote loner, right? I just I didn't have anybody. And and when you're shy, when you're an introvert, you don't necessarily want to talk or approach people. It's really hard to do that, breaking the ice type of thing. So if you're there as a team, be on the lookout for folks that are just, you know, you're consistently just seeing being alone. Um, definitely reach out to them, invite them to have lunch with you or sit down with you or or just sit in your row or something, right? Because it, it's a it, it's amazing how alone we can feel in a sea of like 4,000 people. It's just, it's mind blowing to me. So definitely reach out to people if you can do that. And most importantly, again, I, I, I said this already, just want to echo it again. The creators are going to be there in full force. So the Jura guy, myself, my producer, King Bob from the Jura Life, we're all going to be out there. So if you want, approach us. We are definitely excited to be with everybody. We are going to be doing some panels. We, we have, we're, we're kind of spread out throughout the days. We're going to be everywhere and anywhere. But if you see us in the hallway, if you see us sitting down, whatever it is, even if we're in the middle of a conversation, obviously when we're not presenting, but at any other point where I'm not like with a microphone in my hand talking, uh, you are more than welcome to come and approach and, and say hi. Uh, we can take a picture of whatever you want, um, but definitely approach. If you see Brittany, if you see the Jira guy, right? All the people that are going to be there from a creator's perspective, go and say hi, and um, I'm sure they're going to love it. And then finally, let's let's talk about these talks a little bit more, right? So keep in mind they're all recorded, so you don't have to stress about attending them all. Build some gaps in your schedule where you can and do have an opportunity to just go and talk to other people or just relax or just hang out. There's just so much to do. It is very overwhelming. Don't go in with the expectation that you're going to hit all the events because it's just so much. The only ones that I do caution you are in the expo floor. So a lot of the talks, a lot of the publicized talks happen on the expo floor. And I want you to be careful here because the expo floor is loud. It is so incredibly loud. And so if you are going to go to the talks that are on the expo floor, get there early and get there early to the point where you're catching the previous session because these are like 30 minutes long and they're usually like stacked on top of each other. So get there when the last one's ending so that you can go to the front and sit down because you want to be, trust me when I tell you, you want to be face to face to the to the speakers because if you're not, there's just so, like it's, it's embedded, right? Like they're in the corners of the expo floor. So if you're farther back, you're just hearing noise. You're hearing everybody chattering. You're hearing other people having sidebar conversations at the, like in the talk. And so you want to be as front to the stage as you possibly can so that you can have, your, your undivided attention given to them because otherwise it is so hard to focus, right? It's so, so, so challenging. So you want to be up front, front and center, and just being able to listen to, to that speaker. So you, and, and again, keep in mind they're quick and also clean up after yourself. Because one of the things that I learned last year was you usually come in with some food because <laughs> there's food everywhere. And then you kind of just leave your food behind. So clean up after yourself and, and take your trash with you. And uh, let's see, uh, 
Talks are happening everywhere. They're not just in the expo floor. This is a lesson that I learned. And unfortunately, I didn't learn this lesson until the very end of the last day. But most of the talks happen on the expo floor. But there's going to be a lot of talks that happen outside of the expo floor. Vendors have their own talks. Um, there's going to be just Atlassian dedicated sessions that are maybe a little bit longer, closer to an hour. And they happen in rooms outside of the expo floor. And unless you go venturing, unless you go looking for them, you're not going to know about them. So I actually didn't know until I wandered off and I'm like, oh, there's like a third floor here with a lot of stuff happening on the third floor. There's stuff happening in rooms around the Venetian. There's just stuff everywhere. So ask, 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 ask. And whatever you do, do not ask the people holding the sign. They don't know anything. <laughs> uh, I, I know it's rude and mean of me to say that, but they literally don't know much about anything. So ask like other attendees ask just people that are there uh, if a vendor's like saying like hey we're gonna go do something special at five o'clock come over here at five ask them where that is because uh the other people outside again there's, there's a lot of people and like holding these signs that tell you like team 24 or whatever those people won't know anything about anything and then I, that's pretty much it finally just have fun uh team 23 last year was the most fun i've ever had in my life I am going in with so much energy, so much excitement, so much expectation. I want to meet you. I want to see you. And if you want to see me, make sure you check out the schedules because I'm going to be in a couple of panels and I'm going to also be walking around the expo floor. So if you want to find me, you will most likely find me with a microphone interviewing people. So if you want to, you know, have your 5, 10, 15 seconds of shame, <laughs> uh, definitely come and find me and uh, we'll see what we can do. So. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit longer, but I'm going to be clipping this one up so that you can get all the pro tips on how to survive Team 24.